Paisano's is bringing it big time every Sunday. You can still buy a large pizza and get the second large pizza for free. Wait a minute, Tan. I'm using it now. Use the code BOGO Pizza on the app or online and get. You know what? I'm going to get it. Ready. Coming up on the Santana Moss Show podcast, why Tana was Easter Sunday clean on him. Pop your collar. And we have a special guest. Once upon a time, you can say the Redskins had a bunch of those you boys in the house. But now I will say it myself. I didn't think I would come to these days. Roll Tide. <laughs> we landed Landon Collins. Baby, we just got bet on defense. Landed Landon. Very good. It's a tongue twister. Let me try one. Case is on the case. Wait, what? The Jacks is back. The NFC East has a problem. We got to see d Jack twice again over here in red skin country. Man, I don't give a damn about Philly. I should give them the take an L, but I reserve it for some others this week. And the Santana Moss Show stars <laughs> now. It's a Santana Moss Show. Home of the Blue Ball Dream. Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. Hot mic on the left. Every single week. Santana Mall Show Podcast, Travis Thomas, Santana Mall. What's up, my brother? Yeah, you a little Arsenio Hall right there. Damn, I miss Arsenio. Me too. Hoo, 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 hoo. By the way, special guest in the building, Rashad Ross, the boss. Arizona hot shots, <laughs> balling out of control in Lighten the AAF. He's played for damn near every team in the league, including the Redskins. He was teammates with Tana doing his thing here on the Santana Moss Show. What's up, Rashad? What's up? Good with your player. I told him, I was talking to him before we got on air. He's from Vallejo, California, home of E-40. So I have to get some E-40 questions later in the show. But I'll hold off on that for now. Tana, let's start with you. I saw a picture of you on social media recently. GQ, wasn't I? Man, you were cleaner than a car boy, wash, boy. Shock, shock, what shock. was going on? I had a busy weekend, you know, unlike the weekend before when I yeah, told you I did you absolutely chilling. nothing. Uh, this past weekend, I had a, um, I had an engagement Saturday morning where I was um, – Played in this poker, this charity uh, event, Chance for Life. Oh, the Chance for Life, yeah. M- MGM. Yeah, MGM. Okay, bet, There was bet, a lot bet. of guys out there yeah. from NBC yeah. and everything. I uh, played in that poker tournament, and then later that night, you know, 89 Ways to Give, my foundation partnered up with uh, Salvation Army. Uh, we had a charity event to bring awareness and raise money for, okay. um, you know, human trafficking. And it's something that's that I didn't know it was so big in D.C., in the DMV area, and, man, the guest speakers kind of enlightened me with what's going on, some of the things we've been seeing. But uh, besides all that, man, I was shocked. I know you saw it. I knew I was going to I'm gonna share those pictures with the, you know, with our audience a little later. But, yeah, I had to um, take off the cap and go out there and Boy. strip my stuff a little bit. Hey, Rashad, he had to shape up on point. He had to <laughs> suit. <laughs> Shad knew, knew back in those days I used to wear the hat with the little, little semi-fro when I – I couldn't grow the fro uh-huh. no more, so I had the little baby fro to look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rashad, not everybody can do that, brother, but, you know, oh, you ain't heard man. that from me. Hey, Rashad, man, I want to talk to you because you've been balling out of control, as I said, in the AAF for the Arizona Hot Shots. You lead the league damn near in every statistical category in terms of receivers. Mm-hmm. But, I, you know, I want to ask you this. Your team has struggled as of late. You guys have lost three in a row. What's going on with your team, and, and how have you seen success in the AAF? Well, I think with the team, we just start off slow. And then when we realize we down and we and we got a chance to come back, then we we hit the button, the turn on button, and try to turn it on. And, and sometimes, well, the last three weeks has just been too late. So I think with the team, we just got to um, start off fast. What's been up with your success? Is it is it all speed-based? Because every time I see you, you beating <laughs> people like a drum out there. Well, I mean, I've just been focused. Yeah. You know, I've been focused trying to get back to the league, trying to make sure I do everything right. Because when I was in the league, they put me in a box. And the box was just a yeah. returner. He a returner. That's all he is. So the AF really just gave me an opportunity to show that I can do more than return. I ain't never played slot receiver, and they got me playing slot. And I'm still going deep in the slide. I'm running the routes. Um, I'm catching the hard balls and getting hit and hanging on to them. So hopefully that shows the NFL – that uh, 
I can be a receiver, a complete receiver. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you, what's the difference like, you know, uh, from from playing in the NFL and just playing in the Alliance League? I, I Just from me watching you alone, I can see you, you're more, you know, you're more focused. You just spoke on focus, but I can see you out there just doing things. To, it's like you're playing at a different pace than everybody else. You know, when I watched you, you probably the first year you got a chance to play, play in the league, play with the Skins. You made plays, but you can tell at times you had a little get up, and you you know you wasn't you was probably thinking a little too much. Right now, it don't seem like you're thinking that much. Yeah, here the difference is you know being an undrafted free agent and coming in and battling, and every Tuesday or every Monday, whenever you have an off day, you have somebody coming in to take your spot. Yeah. So you walking on eggshells, you really you really stressing and thinking too much. Here it's more I'm more relaxed. I'm not worrying about nobody coming to take my position. I'm just coming with my own like I'm being myself man you doing your thing out there man and Rick Neuheisel is his coach too Tana yeah. and not to mention am I wrong Rashad you play in your college stadium there right don't they play at the Arizona State Stadium yeah we play at the Arizona State Stadium are you home then you feeling oh you out there remember those old times I saw one of your little clips you said you just pointed you caught one of them little TDs in that Ooh. corner and you just put that hand up Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Tell me this, it's though. Tell me time. this. Do you think this league will open up doors for guys like yourself? I mean, you know, I, I noticed that you guys are going to be playing basically in the spring. And then for, for guys like yourself who are excelling well and who's going out to put up numbers, do you think you will have enough in your tank to, to kind of recoup and be ready for a, a tryout with the league if they come calling? Personally, I think I'll be able to because I've been there before. So I know what uh, the respect – I mean, I know what what's going to go, what's going to happen. So – I think I will be. I don't know if other guys will be if they never been there. But if you've been there, you should know how training camp's gonna go. Even though every team is different, I've been on a couple teams. It's kind of different, but at the end of the day, it's all the same. We still, we still gotta wake up early in the morning yeah. and do everything that we have to do. But yeah, the piggyback on what you just said, I think that uh, this is the opportunity for just a lot of people because you know when you in and you're not a draft pick, you. Don't get chances like that. It, it's struck. It's it's hard, man. It's hard pickings. Yeah. It's it's hard. And here, I feel like you at least get a fair chance here because everybody play. You know. Me and Travis just talking about you earlier, and I told him from just from what I I watched, you know, my last year as a skin, and then the year removed, I was like, he was like, you know, what happened here with you? And I'm like, look, here's a guy that I believe that truthfully. If we didn't have a Ryan Grant, you know, Ryan Grant was a guy that had so much potential. He was a guy to me, I picked as a starter when I left. I'm like, you know, Ryan Grant going to take over either one of those positions. I, yeah, I know we had Deshaun. I know we had Pierre. So those guys was solid in their positions. But I believe that Ryan Grant was going to be the next guy to step up. If any one of those guys got Nick, he can lead. And Rashad was on the team where I feel that they would have gave him the opportunities that Ryan Grant got, he would have been a chance. To, he would have had his chance to still be in the league to this day. So, wow. um, I think that you're doing well, man, well enough to even, you know, be looked at and, and, and have that second or third chance, whatever chance it may be for you. But the one of the things that I noticed from you a little differently is, like you said, you know, when we have our little moments when we go back and forth with each other through Instagram or text, you know, you can tell that you have a different mindset. And remember, I used mm -hmm. to always talk about that to you, like, look, bro, I feel where you're coming from. I understand how it is when you're coming in. Because even though I didn't have to go through those, you know, those hard times as being a guy, uh -huh. you know, or restricted free agent or, or, or free agent, period, I understand that they don't give you those opportunities. And then when they do give you those opportunities, it's once in a lifetime, it's one. Right. Okay, here go one chance, make it or break it. So I understand that what I would tell you, just like I tell you all the time, is just take what they give you. But when you get it, make sure you raise an eyebrow every time. You know, my dad told uh -huh. me years ago, years ago, you know, when you get your opportunity, make sure they remember you. You know what I mean? Make sure every time you step on the field, they remember your name. You know, I want to, I tell my kids to this day when they play ball or whatever they're doing in life, period. I'm like, look, when you get an opportunity to do something, make sure when you leave, they say, you saw that? You saw that Moss kid? So that's what I would tell you. And that's what you're doing now in the Alliance League. Every week, I'm tuning on just to Every see what week, you're doing. bro. I'm not, I care less about <laughs> who else is out there. I got to see Ross. I got to see my little homie, you know, and you put on the show, but I can tell you focus. I can tell you going out there, you're hungry. And then what I would say, keep that same energy. That mm. energy, regardless of when it comes, bring that over here and show them that, look here, man, I, I was dealt whatever y'all gave me. I played those cards. I got a new deck now. Here's my new deck of cards. 
and guess what? I got some jokers in here. And mm-hmm. these jokers, and they ain't, they ain't to make you laugh. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. These are my jokers going to show you that I'm a guy that you guys slept on. So continue doing what you're doing, man. I really uh, applaud you for going out there and, and playing the way you're playing because I can tell you learn. You know, this this league is probably going to be one of those leagues that they send guys to, like the D League and basketball. Like a minor league. Like yeah. the minor league. I'm not sure how it's going to, you know, work for guys, but I can truthfully see a lot of growth in your game. So I'm hoping you can carry that over back to the NFL. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. No doubt, bro. No doubt. That's game. And and you talk about make him remember your name. He's got six touchdowns. The yeah. next closest receiver has two. They waiting two. on see dances. They want to see. <laughs> I heard a commentator say, look here, the touchdown is cool. I'm ready for the dance. The man got dances every week piled up on him. So make sure you have a, a rep. You got to have a big folder. So you got to have one of these right here. Hey. You got to have you a big folder with your name on it. Just say Rashad and his moves. Because you got to have some dances for these guys, man. They looking They looking for you to excite the crowd. Hey, Rashad, man. let's get some Vallejo. Give me some hyphy moves or something, man. Give me something. Oh, I got the next game, I got you, man. Because I'm playing against, I'm playing against uh, one of the, one of my old teammates. He was with the Redskins, Terrence Garvin. Okay. And he play on Orlando. He always calling me, talking mess, Uh-oh. talking about I ain't gonna do nothing this week. So, I, you know, I ain't finna talk nothing back. I'm just gonna show him on the field. You know, got a couple dances for him. You know, it's crazy. Orlando's undefeated too. So, for them to get back on track, yeah, to be the undefeated team would be nice. All right, so Rashad, let's jump into some Redskins stuff. Landon Collins, six years, 84 mil from the Skins, 32 guaranteed. Tanner, your thoughts? My thoughts is unlike everybody else's thoughts. I heard all the backlash of, oh, this is typical of the Redskins. They're getting back to their old selves, spending money for a guy who can do nothing but be a box safety. Um, you know, his own team didn't want to give him $11 million, you know, uh, you know, per year as a starter, and the Redskins go out here and spend more money. I believe he's 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 proven. He's a proven guy. Only been on his rookie salary. And went out there and made three Pro Bowls last year. Probably easily probably been a, a a Pro Bowl alternate if that at worst. Missed four games. Still led the team with ninety some plus tackles. Uh, he's some he's somebody that we need. Regardless of if if he's a guy that can do it all safety like a Swearinger, because Swearinger was a do it all safety. Yes, we we might can sit down sit, sit back and say yeah he missed tackles here and there. Who didn't miss tackles for the Redskins? But you have a guy in Landon that comes in playing. He's going to be a box guy. I'm pretty sure they're going to move him around because he's a ball hawk. He can cover. He can cover the tight end position. He can make plays. And then he's back here with his guys that he's familiar with. You got an Alabama, you know, pro here. We got a we got a we got a pro Alabama team that we building right here on, in, in the Redskin Park in uh, Ashburn. So. I believe he's going to be one of those guys that we can truthfully say that he's going to be a leader from day one for our team. Yeah, I mean, listen, the thing is, the Redskins are synonymous with paying, overpaying older guys past their prime, right? This is a guy, I mean, Rashad, he's 25 years old, he's in his prime, he's young, and to me, I think now with the Giants not showing him that love, he comes in here with a chip on his shoulder. He's going to want to beat their ass twice a year for the next decade at least. What do you think, Rashad? Good move for the Redskins signing Landon Collins. I think it's a great move because watching him play, he's just a great player overall to me. He's going to make the for Thanks. sure tackle. Yeah. And I know that's what he's going to do. And that's what one of the Redskins need is somebody that can come down and tackle. Tell me yeah. something, Shar. Like being a guy that's in the Alliance League now and just some of the things that you learned – you know, from film studying, uh, who are those guys that remind you of a guy like, you know, uh, Landon, you know, that's playing in your league now? Mm. Uh, film that's on my team or just it's period. anybody in the league? In the league, in the league that you've faced so far this year. That's like, I'll say the the safety we win against. I forgot his name, but he was number 25. Okay. He'd come down and hit you. So when I was going across the middle, that's what I had to worry about. But he did give me one little lick. <laughs> He got me one lick, but him, I, he a big safety. He had come down and hit. Just watching film, we knew that that was the guy that we got to uh, keep our eye on. Do you and think not he's a guy way. that will have a chance to get a shot in the NFL also? Yeah, I think he will be. I mean, I think he was a draft pick. I think he's he, he was a draft pick. I know he went to Michigan State. Gotcha. Okay. I remember that. I just forgot his name, but I know he went to Michigan State. Yeah, Rashad, one of the favorite moments for me on this show is uh, Tana. I asked him, you know, what's the hardest he's ever been hit? And he <laughs> said, Cam Chancellor. Woo! Tried, Cam Chancellor tried to kill him. Well, I'm still getting Rashad. up <laughs> every morning. Oh, 
Oh, boy, my neck and my back. Hey, Rashad, he said he got up like it didn't hurt. but Boy, he... I got up talking <laughs> smack, man. I ain't going to lie. That's I was like, boy, I'm not going to let him know he hit me that hard. That's the boy. dog that said, Taylor, hey, man. man. Don't get up like yeah, that. everybody don't get up like that, Sean. Tell him. I mean, it, it is what it is. <laughs> but the old boy, hey, damn what? I'm on Hey, Rashad, what's the hardest you ever been hit, bro? <laughs> The hardest I ever been hit was probably, I say, the playoff game against Green Bay. Mm. I was trying to run out of bounds, and they still was hitting me. They was <laughs> next year they was going to hit me. That's the difference in that league, too, man. You know, one of the things that I used to tell Rashad also, he can't be one of those, um, you know, one-trick ponies. Like, yeah. you can't go out there. You know, we know what you bring to the table. It's your speed. Right. And, you know, he was good friends with Deshaun also. And I used to tell him all the time. I said, you know, he would come to me. But I saw him, you know, Deshaun was his guy. He's right. younger. He's a guy that, you know, they from the West Coast together. And I say, what he does, you can't do. Mm. And I used to try to tell him that. Why? Why I feel that way. I say, this guy is a first rounder. He came in. They knew what he brought to the table. Right. Speed. You a guy that's trying to make it. You got to show them something else. You know what I mean? It's, it's uh -huh. easy for you to be fast. Everybody fast. But if you can't run intermediate routes, you can't take hits, you can't catch the balls across the middle, then there's no sp place for you. So, mm -hmm. you know, I used to tell you that all the time. I'm pretty sure you can sit here and nod your head and say, yeah, man, me and Tanner had them talks, all whether the time. it was briefly all the time. or not. But I'm like, you have to separate yourself from who you're watching. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. you know, it's going to come a time when they say, okay, you got to think about it. You know, and I'm proud to say this. It was a time when I realized I lost the gear. You know, and I didn't, I was like, damn, I'm out here running, and I'm like, eh, I can see I'm still in that one gear. I'm like, mm. but damn, by this time, I used to turn over, right. and it was it was gone. I didn't tell nobody it was going. I'm pretty sure coaches who watch and study well, they can see it, but I still separated because I didn't allow what got me here to be right. the define of me, to be the definition of Santana. I say, well, at the end of the day, I still have to run routes, still yeah. have to catch passes, so you have to find what's next, and – for a guy like yourself, you will hope, and we knock on wood, that speed is always there for you. Deshaun is blessed with that speed still. He's going on his 12th year. He's still separating. What yeah. I would tell you is to take advantage of this opportunity now in the Alliance League and keep catching those passes across the middle. Keep showing that fearless attitude because one thing my coaches to share with me all the time is that Tanner – they can't talk about you or you can't celebrate if you don't make the catch. Right. So, you know, regardless of how big the play is, that five-yard – smacking the job, but you made that catch, that's as big as that 60-yard touchdown. Hell yeah, because it moved the chains. Uh -huh. Moving yeah. the chains, and guess what it does? Put you in another zone. And when you build that fire up in a guy like yourself who can beat anybody in any coverage, that's dangerous. So, you know what I mean? So take advantage of those opportunities now while you're practicing, you know, in that league, especially in practice. Build that rapport up with those intermediate routes because we know you can go deep. And when you build that stuff and bring that thing back to the league, it's no doubt on you. You can definitely play in this league, and you can be a returner and be a game changer. That's what we need in this league. You need game changing ability, and you have that potential. So now, you know, I'm hoping you can just hold that thing in, keep building it, and then bring it back. Yeah, that's the goal to keep building. That's what my coach told me when I first got here, New Heism. He was like, "Yeah, we putting you in the slot." And I'm, and one thing I was like. Why? Like, I'm better outside. I can beat anybody outside. And he was like, because you already did that in the league. Mm -hmm. We saw you in the preseason. Do we saw you favor. score all them touchdowns. Exactly. Now it's time for you to show that you can do the other things. I'm not sure uh, if you – I'm not sure. And I ain't mean to cut you. I'm not sure if you do this. I do this to this day, you know, even with guys that's doing what I'm doing now. Like, I would go and watch Travis talk, you know. I would go and watch whoever is talking, talking. I'm going to watch you talk. When I played the game – I took from everybody. They wouldn't know it's theirs because I made it look like mine. But while you in that uh -huh. slot, go watch the guys who run the routes you're running. Go watch the guys yeah. in the league. Go watch, you know, Edelman. Go watch anybody who D plays Lane. the slot. All these slot receivers, because when you come back, you're going to need to be able to play X, Y, Z, and G. You feel what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So yeah. you're going to have to be able to say, okay, we can line him up as a tight end, but he's a receiver. I mean, that's what – yeah. Allowed me to play 14 years. I knew every position. If you was catching the pass, I knew it. I even knew the guys in the backfield because at one point in time when I, when I first got here, you know, Coach Gibbs would slide me in the backfield and say, run a wheel route, you know what I mean, or run a swing pass, you know. So just know any time you can have a chance to touch the ball, know all those guys' position, but watch them. Just watch what they're doing, you know. Watch the routes, how they run them, if they run them right or wrong, what you can tweak and, and, and make look like yours or, or take from them and make it yours. But that's how I excelled in this league, and that's how I excelled throughout my career, period. Because even when I was a, a young buck in high school, 
I had guys at the other high schools that I looked up to. They didn't even know it. I tell them now because they look up to me like, man, mm-hmm. you made it pro. I'm like, you, watch, you don't even know. You yeah. was catching for 1500 a year. I was catching one or two passes a game, if Damn. that. <laughs> and I'm, yeah. I'm looking at this guy like, man, you see what he's doing? So I have friends that have cousins that I watched. They didn't even know until I told them after them being fans of me. But I took pride in watching guys. Mm. I took pride in watching the way they ran routes. I took pride in watching the way they caught passes. Anything that they did, did that, that I was doing, I wanted to make sure that if you was doing something well or even you know good enough for me to pay attention to it, then I'm going to take heed to it. So that's the way you excel as, as well. That's the way you get ahead of everybody because you pay attention to what's around you. Even guys in that Alliance League, you know, whoever's doing it, some, doing something that you didn't do, watch the way they get off a of press, watch the way they, you know, they attack the ball, watch the way they, you know, uh, you know uh, use their hands. All that stuff could come into, uh, you know, help, you know, be very helpful for you when it comes to, you know, being a guy that has that second chance to come bring it to this league because I feel like you're going to get it. And it's up to you what you bring with you when you come, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, no doubt. And, Rashad, just so you know, when Tana said he watched me talk, he didn't learn a damn thing. I just want you to understand. <laughs> he a damn liar. I just want to be clear that he didn't learn anything. Tana, since the last time we did this podcast, Case Keenum is now the Redskins mm. quarterback. Do you like that move for the Skins? You know what? Um, you hear so many Redskins fans being disgusted and, oh, what are we doing? We need a quarterback. We need this and that. You know, getting a Case Keenum didn't didn't leave us out of the uh, picture of looking for some young help somewhere down the line, maybe in the draft maybe in free agency, they still going to probably go out there and have a quarterback in mind. Even if they don't pick a quarterback in this draft or this free agency going around, maybe next year. But I think Case Keenum bringing him in, swapping picks out with Denver, that was genius. Yeah. To me, that's how your GM should think. You know, let's bring a guy in that's capable, at worst, can still go out there and win games for us. Denver's play, paying a lot of that bill, too, bro. He's only worth, he's only costing you $3 million this year. Yeah. You can't get a quarterback for that much in this league. Even a, a damn fourth or fifth screen quarterback, you can, you know, you got to pay that kind of money, too. Right. Case Kingdom, he comes in, safe as you have to go out there and use a six round pick on somebody. There's no, nothing that's saying that that guy's going to make your team. So, right. Excuse me, bringing in the case, Keenum gives you a little more depth in the position, bring you a guy that's capable of winning. He's shown that before. And under the right tutelage, you know, and system, he can go out there and be productive. Yeah. So I, I don't see no wrong in going out there to get him. I do see room still left out there for maybe if that trade comes open with, you know, um, um, Arizona and they want to get rid of Rosen, we might be the team that say, hey, we still want one. We Hell still yeah. need one. So you never know. But – I don't see nothing wrong with getting Case Keenum. A lot of people might say different. I just feel that right now what the Redskins is doing that I appreciate, they're building, they're stacking our locker room. You need to have players. Last year we found ourselves depleted in a lot of positions because we didn't have depth, and we had to go out there and find guys off the street, off their couch, and that showed showed you what we was about when it comes to a team. We was a joke, you know what I mean? So now they're doing what they have to do and go out there and find depth in those key positions so we can be contenders. I'm with you. I think if they broke the bank for him, I'd be upset. But the fact that they didn't give up much to get him, first of all, and that the Broncos are paying a lot of that money, I think it makes sense for the Redskins. And I'm with you. They should go get Josh Rosen. I would have already done it by now. I don't know what the holdup is. Rashad, what do you think of uh, Case Keenum now You know, with the Redskins? Good move? I think it's a good move. It's just another quarterback. That and he's a legit quarterback. It, it ain't like watching him play. It ain't like he's a bad quarterback. And I feel like they need another quarterback. And with Josh Rosen, I feel like he's good, too. I was with him in Arizona uh, with him. Arizona with him. Yeah. He can really throw the ball. He got real good accuracy. He just need time. And I feel like and down the road, he's going to be a real good quarterback. You know, that's a good you know point to bring up. You was out there in training camp with those guys, right? Mm-hmm. So with all this being said about Josh Rosen, you know, these guys trying to ship this guy up out of there and blaming everything on him, that offensive line suck, that system suck. You know, the damn guy who we just watched kill the league for the past two years, the running back himself. David Johnson. David Johnson, DJ, he did barely anything. And for them to just put so much on Josh Rosen and thinking that, okay, we're going to bring in Murray because we got a new head coach who want to do all this. You know, I mm-hmm. think it would be great for us to have a guy like that because what you just said, he has an amazing arm. That's what I've been hearing around the whole entire league. Every analyst that speak on this kid say he has an amazing arm. When you're young, you have that room to suck. You have that room to look bad. So you have a guy like that that took all that heat. Do you think he has potential of being a great quarterback in this league? 
I think he have. Uh, even Larry Fitzgerald, when we first was there, Larry Fitzgerald's like, he got something. He going to start before week four. And he ended up starting. Like, I don't think it was really on him. Because just catching passes and everything from him, he was a good quarterback. I think it was everything else. Like, the line wasn't that good. I don't even think – honestly, I don't think the play calling was that good. But mm. I just think he a great quarterback. He'll be a good quarterback for the Redskins. So. Hey, Rashad, uh, Deshaun Jackson's heading back to Philly. What do you think of that move? You think it'll work out? Yeah, I think it's going to work out because that's where – I think I feel like that's where his heart at. That's where he really want to be. I had talked to him – a couple of days ago, before it all happened, that's where he told me he was going. I didn't believe it, but I seen it, and I hit him up, and he was like, yeah, this is where I really want to be. He been asking to go there for the longest now, so I, I feel like he's going to put all his eggs in that basket, and he's going he gonna to be great there. Yeah, that's what's up. I feel the same way. You know, I think that uh, just watching him, you remember a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Now, Travis, do you remember when that whole thing transpired, and I say, man, I don't like him going – in this state of his career, yeah, you said it. going down to, to, you know, be amongst that, you know, uh, Winston kid. I didn't, yeah. I just didn't see him see, being I a quarterback. See, I thought it was a home run, but you I called that. I didn't see him being a quarterback for Deshaun because one of the things that I do, being the receiver that I am, and I've had tons of quarterbacks. I watch these guys, and I kid you not, I have nothing against, you know, James, but I just feel like when we come a, at the point in our career when you reach – that 10-year, yep. you're trying to add on to what you've already built and win a championship. And, you know, he here's a guy who I looked at as a a, a Jason Campbell. Strong arm, you know, unlike Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell, later in his career, he was slinging that thing when he played in Oakland. Yep. When he played with the Browns. He caught – it's the uh, game slowed down for him. I haven't seen it slow down yet for James. I think he does a lot of things – that's um that you kind of scratch your head like why you didn't need to do that you know what I mean that's one thing Jason wouldn't have done Jason would hold on to that ball and get sacked before he was he almost go too out. damn safe yeah he was he was so safe at times I used to be like bro just run at the end of the day <laughs> you know? I remember one day I said something to the media like man if Jason Campbell just run when he see nobody open then we'll be all right and the next game he runs for thirty something yards on one carry right. you know and he looked at me like yeah that's what I want but James was a guy that he's so confident in his arm he felt like he can just throw any pass and be late when he's late. No, you can't do that in this league. These guys study. These guys are seconds away from, you know, taking that thing, you know, the other way for six. So when I seen Deshaun go down there, I'm like, maybe it's something that, that he know. I don't know. I just didn't see it. I didn't think it was right a good money. fit. I want to see him with a quarterback that can really dissect defenses. Yeah. That can pick defenses apart, find you in coverage when you're not in the first, second, or third progression. And I think now I'm getting a chance to go back to Philly. He got Wentz. Um, Wentz is nice. He just got to stay healthy. Wentz has got to stay healthy, and he has to also um, escape that whole thing that's going on now with saying that he can't be the guy right. unless he has the guy who just left, you know, Foles. you know, Foles being his backup. So uh, I think it's a good chance for Deshaun to go back and reclaim what he's been to the NFC East. You know, he was that guy, man, that – you get caught slipping, man. He's down that sideline on you, and that's one of the things that he haven't, you know, he haven't lost. I remember Jay Gruden. I, I, I always. It's crazy that it wasn't me. He said this to, <laughs> but I remember it, and don't know why he said it, but you know, every young guy with y'all talent, with our talents, should hear that. And you know, Jay Gruden was basically telling D Jack he was mad with him. I don't know if you was there that day. He, he was running comebacks in practice. And Jay Gruen was mad at DJ for running the comeback. And he said, when you lose that 4-2, you know, maybe nobody will take a chance on you in this league. Mm. And DJ, you know, that's DJ. I don't want to hear that shit mm-hmm. talking about Jay Gruen. But I <laughs> laugh because that's the way DJ will respond. With a guy like myself, I took heed to that. And I'm like, see, I lost my 4-2. Mm-hmm. 4-2 ain't there no more. But I'm still taking pride in how I run these routes, how I set you up, how I come off the ball. And so – you know, fortunate for him, he's a guy that still got the, that blazing speed. And I'm pretty sure because he didn't have to deal with the knee injuries. I had three knee surgeries, right. you know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why you get a chance to, you know, be where I was at late in my career. But um, one of the things I tell you, take pride in that. You know, take pride in, in knowing that, you know, one of the gifts that we have, you know, people are waiting for us to lose that gift. And mm-hmm. if you sharp at what you're doing, you know, like I spoke about earlier, you just being knowing how to get open in space when the zone, Focus. knowing how to beat man on oh man. You know, 
stuff like that will keep you around as long as you want to be in this game. And, you know, that's why I'm so pleased to see Deshaun be able to go back to Philly because even though he hasn't, you know, been dealt with nothing serious and that's not going to work because you don't want to, you know, you don't want that from nobody, I'm glad he still can separate. And it was it was a, a, a big example watching that last year with Fitzpatrick knowing because yeah. Fitzpatrick, the thing that Fitzpatrick did different than Winston, that Fitzpatrick was set – DBs up and like, hey, right. I'm, I'm looking this way. Bait I'm throwing over here. I'm baiting this guy. Once he's patting that thing, waiting on you to get open before you know if his back ain't getting blown out, he's blowing you up. So I'm happy that Deshaun's <laughs> able to go somewhere where somebody's going to give him a little chance to be great again. And because he has that potential, man, he has still at this age, what, 32 years old yeah. almost, or probably about to be 33 soon, he has the potential to still be a game changer. Hey, Rashad, every week on this show, we do something called taking L's, right? Where maybe it's me or Tana, we took an L for the week, or we pass it out to a celebrity or somebody who caught an L. This week, I'm doing something different. Yeah. Rashad, <laughs> I'm, the taking L's of this week is to everyone who has to line up against yo ass in the <laughs> AAF. I mean, 401 <laughs> receiving yards, second in the league, six touchdowns, leads the league by far, 24 receptions. Second in the league. You are eating over there, bro. Got to eat, man. Got to eat to be where I want to be. Well, you eat, man. You passing out L's like touchdowns, man. I love it. And I got I cannot let you go, man. Look, so I'm I'm born here in the DMV, right? Uh-huh. I was the biggest E40 fan here on the East Coast, bro. <laughs> my friends used to hate. I had one friend that liked E40. But other than that, all my friends were like, man, he sound crazy. He sound like he got a mouthful of marbles. What's he rapping about? He's rapping off beat. And now those same friends are like, man, E-40, cold, man. He's yeah, still dude. doing – bro, you from Vallejo. Can you just talk to a fanboy like me about growing up there with that unique sound that y'all have from E-40 and others like him? E-40 got his own ling- lingo, you know, his own language. So we all appreciate E-40 because he never changed. You know how you now you see rappers trying to switch it up it's or change up. just mm-hmm. and try to be like – What's popping? Yeah. E forty gonna come on a beat and be the same E forty back in the nineties, and we just appreciate that because he never changed. He a real one, and he an OG in, in Vallejo. Everybody look up to him. He good anywhere in the Bay Area. OG, wow. OG. You know? Do you know him? Uh, I don't know him personally. I saw him. He came to a couple games when I was playing for Vallejo High. I mean, he would act like he knew me if he seen me because that's <laughs> what type of guy he is. Yeah. You see, he be, yeah. but he he good everywhere. You see, he be at all the Warriors games on the floor. That's he good up. everywhere, though. Hey, man, one thing I picked up from this podcast, man, is is I really appreciate you and Tanner's relationship. Tanner gives you game, and you soak it up. You're not hard-headed. You listen, and you apply it, and it's showing with your That's work, That's why you're going to be around for yeah, a while. I it's mean, showing, one of the things bro. that you learn that I've learned throughout anything is, is to be a student, regardless yep. of it. It don't matter how old you are or how – past you feel where you're supposed to have been at, just be a student. Just be a student of the game. Listen to everybody. Even if it don't make sense that time, listen to it. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to paint it out. Say, well, you know what? A little bit of what he said is all right, so I'm going to take one page of that shit he's talking about. But at the yeah, end of the day, just be a student. You feel me? Yeah, that's one thing about Tenor, though. Just playing with him and, and watching him play, too. Like, he teaching me how to be a leader here because here I'm one of the older guys, and I got to be a leader. So just I'll be hitting up Tenor every once in a while, asking him questions, but – one thing I really enjoy about Tanner is him showing it. Like, he don't just talk, you know what I'm saying? Like, just watching him, like, how old he was, he still had it. I just uh, I just can't imagine when he was young, 25, yeah. 22, how he was doing it. But, but don't bring back them damn years in my head. Oh. <laughs> hey, Rashad, he had them damn brains. <laughs> <laughs> but still, though, like, when, when I'm saying he was showing it, I mean, like, I never really saw Tanner take a vet day off how old he was. You'll see Pierre sometimes don't practice. Deshaun sometimes don't practice. But Tanner was still just out there. And I used to wonder, look at him like, man, you're the oldest person on the field and you still out here. And he, he was like, man, I'm this 14 years. I'm still trying to play. I got to still show it. And that's one thing that I always think about when I'm nicked up and I'm, I'm hurting and I really don't want to go to practice while I'm here. I just think about Tanner like, what would Tanner do? Ooh, what what would Tanner do? That's deep. That's deep. That's what's wow, up, hey Rashad, I'm getting a shirt to say that, bro. What would oh, Tanner man. do? Now I love that man because honestly, you know, one of the things that people fail to realize is, and I saw it coming, man. Like you know, and that's why I walk around this this city and I appreciate all the love. But I never cared what people thought. I remember I went to a game, and I don't know if it was Dion. Somebody said something to somebody, 
and they was like, oh, 89, still out there. You know, uh, wow. he basically said he collecting checks still. And I wasn't fun of that. I didn't I didn't think that was cool because I ain't collecting a check. I'm working for this damn check. I ain't just getting no check because you want to give me a check. But d and I don't know if it was, prime, it was somebody in one of them, them you know, NFL network or something, and d was like, nah, they need to be playing OG. OG mm. need to be playing. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And that Facts. was the year that they was they was me around with playtime. And I sat there and I, I tapped them on behind. I said, man, I appreciate that. But, bro, you ain't got to talk to nobody because you see me. I just kept it moving because people always assume from what they seeing. But they don't really be in house with you to see what's really going on. I'm out here eating people up, man. John, like I say, eating up bread with the John Deere, mowing people mm-hmm. line every day, mm-hmm. routing up our first oh, teamers. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Routing up our first teamers. But I got to come out here and play, you know, play the pine and, and and watch. And that's I learned about this game because they can force you out when they're ready. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And they will force you out when you're ready. And man, I've heard it from so many different people telling me how to took how should I. Uh, should have approached that. Oh, Tony, you should have been more vocal. That ain't get me here. I didn't get this far talking crap. I didn't get this far speaking out, going off on coaches. Nah, if that's what you want to do, bro, that man up there got me. At the end of the day, man, I laid everything out there, Hello. and I can't do nothing about what you take from me. At the end of the day, I gave you all I have, and I'm still giving it to you. If you want me out, then push me out of there. Guess what? I'm not going to fight because at the end of the day, I feel like I don't have no regrets, and I don't have nothing else to prove. So if that's what you want and you find better, do that, I'm out. I think that says it all. I'm going to go get these shirts pressed up. WWTD, what would Tanner do? Thank you, Rashad. <laughs> My boy. Thanks for having me. I appreciate I'll be watching, you, man. man. Appreciate you coming on, brother. Salute. All right. Santana Mall Show Podcast. It's a wrap. It's a Santana Mall Show. Home of the new ball game. Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. Hot mic on the left. Every single one.